Hi there. I just wanted to pop in because I have been away from social media for a while. I've been traveling. I was actually in Hong Kong for three weeks and I just got back a couple of days ago. I am still very jet lagged. Um, I'm still waking up at funny times at night and feeling sleepy during the day because Hong Kong is 15 hours ahead of Los Angeles, which is where I'm based. But I wanted to pop in and say, hey, because I missed all of you guys. And today, uh, actually this morning, I was interviewed by someone by the name of Alan Steinfeld, who is a ufologist, a UFO and alien ET expert, because I am going to be speaking early next year. I'm going to be speaking in Sedona at an event called the Sedona Ascension event, which is actually mostly about ETs and aliens and UFOs. But I will be offering my perspective of consciousness. So that topic is foremost on my mind simply because just a little while ago, I had an hour long interview about the topic with Alan. Now, I'm not an expert on ETs and UFOs, but I speak on the subject, if I'm invited to speak on the subject, uh, I speak on it from the perspective of consciousness because when I left my body, I was immersed in just pure consciousness. There was no separation between me and everything else. It's like um, when we leave our bodies, we are just pure consciousness. We leave behind our biology and our, uh, we leave behind our religion, our culture, our spirituality. And so from the perspective of consciousness, there are certain things that I became aware of which we don't realize when we're in the physical. <clears throat> Excuse me. And one of the things that I was really aware of when I was in that state is that consciousness is all about um, growth. It's, it's, uh, and it's all about uh, basically if you are, if, if you're in a physical body and you are unwell, consciousness is always reaching towards healing and full health and wholeness. Consciousness is always evolving towards higher evolutions of itself. So higher evolutions means wholeness, fullness, health, forward movement. Consciousness does not move towards sickness. So when we are, when consciousness is manifest in the physical, then what happens is that in the physical, we who manifest as physical beings, we sometimes get in the way of the natural trajectory of consciousness and we get in the way and we are the ones that cause stagnation to growth or we are the ones that cause sickness. It's not from consciousness. Um, and so when I speak about consciousness or even when I speak about extraterrestrials from the perspective of consciousness, one thing I do know is that if extraterrestrials are visiting us, which I know they are, um, then they are obviously more evolved than we are because if they can make the journey all the way from whatever planet they're from, wherever they're from, if they're able to make that journey, they're obviously more advanced and more evolved than we are. When something is more evolved or advanced, when we say they're more evolved or advanced, what do we mean by that? What we mean is that they have a higher level of consciousness. So if they have a higher level of consciousness, it means that their presence here is for the reason of trying to help us uplift our consciousness. We don't have to be afraid of ET or of UFOs, um, of unidentified um, extraterrestrials or extraterrestrial objects. We don't have to be afraid of it because they are actually here to uplift us. Um, we are the ones that are actually the dangerous ones because just take a look around you. Take a look 
at what we're doing in this planet. We are so unevolved. I mean, sometimes it shocks me where we are. And when people say, oh, we are the most advanced species in the universe, I'm like, get a grip, people. If we're the most advanced, then what hope do we have? Look around you. We are still killing people. We're still developing technology to destroy people, human lives. And then we justify um, retaliation by saying, oh, they're doing this, so we have to do this. We have to develop bigger weapons so that we can curb what they're doing. You know, no amount of justification can justify using your brain and your technology and your resources to kill. That goes against consciousness. It goes against evolution. We are doing so much to stagnate consciousness and to stagnate evolution. So right now, um, there are a lot of people that actually spend all their time, all their money, all their energy in trying to develop technology. And we use our technology for the purpose of competition, for the purpose of um, killing, for the purpose, uh, like all kinds of nefarious purposes. But did you know you do not have to actually work so hard at developing technology and working so hard to compete with each other and get ahead of everyone and say, I'm going to be the first to develop this and I'm going to be the first to research this and invent this. You don't have to do any of that if you just developed your consciousness. If you expanded your conscious awareness, you would get the insights to develop the most amazing technology. But here's the catch. That only happens if your technology or, uh, and your conscious awareness is in line with the growth of conscious awareness. In other words, if your intention is to develop technology for the growth of the planet, for the healing of the planet, for the direction in which consciousness naturally flows. You see, consciousness aligns with nature. Nature is all about growth and flourishing and flowering. So is consciousness. When you align yourself with growth and flourishing and flowering, um, then what happens is that you connect yourself and you align yourself with consciousness and you start to get the insights faster and faster. And so you're able to develop technology faster and faster. You will be able to communicate with the other side. You will be able to communicate with extraterrestrials and so on. And, and the reason why sometimes we have so many issues on this planet is because we are still underdeveloped in terms of conscious awareness. And I'm gonna to turn to Abby and I'm gonna say, Abby, um, please check comments, questions. I'm happy to answer questions and comments that are related to this in this vein, if anybody has anything, or even shout out some of the comments. I'd love to hear people's feedback as well. We've got a lot of people welcoming you back and saying they're so glad about you talking about this right now. Um, I am curious, you just said that when you expand your consciousness, you can connect more easily to the other side and to extraterrestrials. Would you, in that, with that definition, say that the other side is just a interdimensional place and ETs could also be interdimensional beings? Exactly. The other side, when I say the other side, it is an interdimensional place, which means um, even our spirit guides, our um, deceased loved ones, and possibly ETs. Now, here's where it gets more interesting, but this is, I'm going to admit, is beyond my own understanding. But when I was in the other realm, time was not linear. It was as though I had access to all of time all at once. And it's very hard to understand it from this perspective, from the physical. But what I believe, because of my experience, I believe that even our future self or even future incarnations of your soul can come back and visit you in this time realm. So sometimes you may think 
that you are being visited by an ET, or even you may think you're being visited by a guided, um, uh, one of your guides from the other side, but it could actually be a future version of yourself, uh, um, your soul, a future version of your soul after it's evolved a few more lifetimes coming back to actually help you through this one. So jumping off of that, do you think that your soul could come back as an extraterrestrial, as, you know, one of the Palladians, or I, I'm not, this is out of my realm as well, but could, could we reincarnate as another species? I don't see why not. I absolutely don't see why not. Because I think that even connecting with other galaxies, planets, and so on, it's all part of the interdimensionalness. Because in our understanding of the speed of uh, of light or the speed of um, travel, let's say the speed of uh, travel, there is no way that a extraterrestrial, that a um, like an alien spacecraft, can travel from another galaxy within the time span of a biological being to travel and to come here on earth unless they are time traveling or going through wormholes. And the fact that we now accept and recognize that we are being visited, I believe they are actually among us already, but the fact that we recognize that we are being visited and people do spot them means that they are so advanced that they are time traveling. So literally anything is possible. And on that as well, we have a lot of people asking, Anita, have you had any personal experiences with ETs? And I think you know a few ETs personally. <laughs> I, I feel I do. So I haven't had any encounters. I have seen lights in the sky, and then I kind of wonder, is, uh, is that an extraterrestrial? Is that a UFO? But I've not had any confirmation it is. But I have had incidences where I have felt... Um, telepathic communication, more than one incidence, but very often I'm, co I'm communicating with my spirit guides all the time, like all the time. But I have had incidences where I felt, huh, I wonder if this is, um, if this is ET communication. If it is, show me some lights in the sky. And in that moment, uh, when I did that, I actually saw something in the sky flash. Now, again, it could have been a plane, but it's funny it happened in the moment where I said, show me something in the sky right now. And there it was, a little string of lights that were flashing. So, And that kind of comes back to your whole thing in Dying to Be Me of when you went to the other side and you saw that you were surrounded by beings, but you couldn't make out what some of them were. I mean, who's to say that they were all ancestors or they were all human or? Exactly. Who's to say who they were? They could have been my future selves. They could have been my evolved form, evolved versions of my own soul. And they could have been deceased loved ones. They could have been extraterrestrial beings from other planets. It could have been anybody. And um, I truly feel, though, that all, whether it's our future self calling us, whether it's um, other beings, uh, other beings from the other side or extraterrestrials, I truly believe that all of them are helping us. And I think there are more and more of them appearing on this planet um, right now in this version of reality right now, because we need all the help we can. I am all the time, every day, I'm saying, please help us because we are going to make ourselves extinct the way we're going. I mean, just look at how archaic we are. Um, so I, I have a, so I'm being very polite here, but when I'm expressing within my own circle, um, I can be pretty rude and blunt about how I feel about what is happening in this world right now. We need all the help we can get. Now, I want to say something else here, which is something that uh, I really learned and felt when I was on the other side. And um, just to alert you, some of you might find it's a little harsh or a little disturbing, but it is what it is. Consciousness like when we cross over and we're in the other side, consciousness has no preference as to whether we are alive or dead. 
And now this is not an invitation for you to cross over. So please know this first as I unwrap what I'm about to say, as I unpack what I'm about to say. So, you know, like when I was on the other side and I realized that my purpose was tied to my husband's purpose, Danny, and if I didn't go back, he would follow soon after. And for me, it was like, that's fine. If he follows, we'll still be together. We'll be on the other side. It wasn't as though from a consciousness perspective, we're not like, oh no, that person shouldn't die. And it's, you know, unless it's not that person's time, there isn't a judgment. In other words, you, even when you're on the other side, even when you're without your body, your soul never dies. You are always alive. You are just a different version of yourself when you're not manifesting through your body. So people ask me, um, why didn't um, the, this person's guardian angels or why didn't ET come down to help these people? These poor people are dying. Children are dying. Why are they dying? So here's the thing. Those people who are crossing over, they are not suffering. They stand for something by crossing over. They're actually showing us how unevolved we are from the higher perspective. So in other words, from that higher perspective, from that God's eye view, I call it, even dying is okay because your soul is still alive and it's just crossed over. However, I'm going to say this again, this is not an invitation for you to take your own life. You're here for a reason. But I'm just explaining to you that when you feel, why didn't somebody from the other side save them? It's because from the other side, it's okay. Um, so that's one thing I want to say. And one of the reasons that they don't always come and help us as individuals is because we have free will. We have free will to cut our lives short or destroy the, the planet. However, when the things that we do, and this is something I really feel strongly about, when the things that we do are destructive on a massive level, where we can wipe out the planet, where we can wipe out colonies and races of people, where it's going to actually disrupt the ecology of the planet or even the atmosphere, then that's when we get the interference and the interruptions from extraterrestrials and otherworldly beings. So it's very common for ETs to show up and for UFOs to show up around nuclear sites because those sites have the ability, those nuclear sites have the ability to destroy the ecology of the atmosphere surrounding the planet, which affects more than just this planet. And that's when they really become interested. As far as individuals go, we're still okay. In fact, we're more than okay on the other side. But yet again, I'm gonna say that's not an invitation to cross over. So I would love to hear from you. If you have anybody who has anything to contribute, please leave it in the comments, but I'm going to leave you with that for now and to let you know that our 2024 calendar is my speaking event calendar for 2024 is now up on my website i have a lot of exciting events coming up uh, my next event is the cruise which is just in two weeks time if you're coming i'm looking forward to seeing you there but in 2024 in january i'm speaking in san diego for tccche i'm speaking in scottsdale arizona with my dear friends bruce lipton greg braden and shamani jane and then i'm speaking in sedona at the sedona ascension event and many many others so i can't wait to see you all um not uh, you don't have to wait till 2024 i can't wait to see you probably next week on another live video thank you for tuning in see you all soon bye